Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video, I'm going to talk about and reproduce one of the often overlooked details on Brian May's Red Special guitar. That's the plastic tip on the end of the tremolo arm. Now you might well ask, why bother? There's nothing interesting about it, and surely a standard aftermarket item is good enough. Well, that's certainly a reasonable perspective, but the Red Special is a one-off, near 100% custom guitar. The only visible hardware bought off the shelf were the pickups, switches, tuning heads and fret wire. Because of this largely bespoke nature, and being as it is of mid-20th century vintage, I find that Red Special replicas are particularly sensitive to key visible details being incorrect, especially if shiny metal parts and bright white plastics are used. This presents a challenge to a DIY enthusiast like me, who doesn't want a worn or relic guitar, but instead prefers a kind of new old stock vintage appearance. This is from one of my mum's large knitting needles. This is a piece from one of my mum's knitting needles. These vintage Millward brand knitting needles are light grey in colour and 12mm in diameter. In earlier pictures, and this one taken in daylight in 2012, the original grey colour is clearly discernible. However, the plastic has discoloured and now has a greenish hue through wear and tear over many decades of use. If you've watched some of my other videos, you might have noticed the reproduction grey-green tip on some of my Red Special guitars. Mikhail Danzen and I collaborated on the design in 2016, and the custom-coloured injection moulded part is available for sale at Danzan Guitars' online store for a reasonable price. To design a replica of the original tremolo tip, I started by importing a photograph into TurboCAD, then tracing over it with a Bezier curve. Let's talk about the shape and design details. Due to parallax error, which I haven't attempted to correct for in this image, reproducing objects from photographs alone is challenging, so I make some assumptions that they conform to either regular metric or imperial dimensions. Scaling off the 3 16th inch diameter tremolo arm, Brian's version appears to be approximately 1 and 1 half inch long and 3 8 inch diameter at the widest point. After fitting a suitable curve to half of the profile, I rotated this 360 degrees to form the solid object. My YouTube videos cover a wide range of topics related to Brian May's musical equipment, and further information on all my projects is available on my website, dsgb.net. Please support my work by liking, commenting and subscribing here on YouTube, and follow me on social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. Mainly for the challenge, but also because I already have a 3D CAD object, I'm going to try to 3D print a batch of tips using the same white ABS-like resin I used to make the plastic parts featured in some of my recent videos. I chose this pack which includes a creme caramel colour to make some Jean Reno switch actuators with a more authentic vintage appearance. My aim is only to illustrate the process for you in this video which is analogous to custom paint mixing for automotive or home decor applications. Because I don't have access to the original object to spectroscopically analyse its colour, I will need to experiment to evaluate which colours work best in the mix and how much dye will be required. Just as we did when producing the Danzan tip, I'll have to use my judgement to try to represent in one single colour the average of the various grey-green hues exhibited by Brian's original item now. If you wish to go the extra mile and reproduce its mottled appearance for a visually authentic relic, I think the only way to achieve this effectively is by applying modelling paints. My first idea was to add the black dye, then dilute this mixture until I achieved the light grey hue of the original Millward knitting needle, then add green and then yellow dyes to move towards an average grey-green-yellowish bulk colour. Here you can see the results of that approach. So adding 0.1 millilitres of black dye using the automatic pipette resulted in a very dark colour. Diluting 1 in 10 between each of these two samples gets us reasonably close. I then tried adding the jade green coloured dye to one of these grey mixtures, but this just didn't look right, so I abandoned that approach and had a rethink. I concluded that I should start over with 5 millilitre samples and systematically add drops of black, green and mango yellow dye in various proportions using these Stumac superglue whip tips until I approached the kind of colour I was looking for. 
Comparing that evolving mixture with both the Danzan tip and against photographs on my computer monitor, it soon became evident that very little green dye was required, but proportionally large quantities of the mango yellow dye were needed. I ended up with two drops of black, one drop of green, and 16 drops of the mango yellow in a 5ml sample of white resin to achieve an acceptable hue, and this is just a little bit greener than that Danzan tip. To reduce the overall colour density, I diluted this original mixture by 50%, then scaled it up 5 times to give 100ml of white resin, then I used that in the 3D printer. I printed in batches of 12 to fill the build plate and to allow for some failures, which you can see has occurred here. I then printed a second batch after topping up the vat with the original white resin from the bottle to evaluate how a lighter tone would look. In this final sequence, you can see all the successfully printed tips, with the lighter batch on the left and the slightly darker batch on the right, and the original Danzan tip in the middle. And there isn't really that much difference in the colour density. Well, that's all from me for this video. So once again, thanks for staying with it or skipping to the end. If you like Star Wars and you were thinking that this colour looks kind of familiar, well, so was I. <laughs>